A First Presbyterian Church of Ridgewood, New Jersey production. You can find our bulletin and hymns on our website by going to www.firstpresridgewood.org and scrolling down to where it says Bulletin and Hymns, clicking that button where you'll find our bulletin and our hymns. Our hymns are streamed and printed with permission under CCLI license number 11548134. Pastor Bruce can be reached at 215-337-5623. And now let us worship God. Good morning. Grace to you and peace this Lord's Day. To those of you worshiping with us online, to all of you in the sanctuary, welcome to worship on this, the third Sunday after Pentecost. It is a joy to worship God together. I hope you'll take a look at the various announcements and the interest items, asking yourself how you might plug in to the life of First Pres in the coming days and weeks. 
Today we begin lemonade in the memorial garden following the service, so I do hope that all of you in the building will stay for that. That's a wonderful tradition here at First Pres, a wonderful summer tradition. Yesterday we held a craft fair here at First Pres, and during the craft fair there was a bake sale. There are a few baked items that happen to be left over, and they will be available during lemonade in the courtyard. And uh, we ask simply that you make a donation to further the cause, the cause being Team 200, which is the group of folks who have started working on planning for the 2023 Bicentennial Celebration. Today, Joshua LaRose, unfortunately, is not feeling well. He was to be the soloist, and uh, Christopher Vamus will provide our special music in those two slots this morning. And now, my friends, please join me in the responsive call to worship. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. For the Lord is a gracious God, whose mercy is everlasting and whose faithfulness endures to all generations. <laughs>
may be seated. Acknowledging our sinfulness before God, let us now pray together. God of the prophets, we confess that we have failed to heed your word. We hear your call to discipleship, but we find it too demanding. We hear the summons to follow you, but we let other allegiances claim us. Forgive us, God of grace. We place our lives in your hands. Set us free to love you, our neighbors and ourselves, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. Friends, who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. <laughs> As people reconciled to God, let us now also be reconciled to one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. traveling music. Good morning. I just want to invite the children up. I'm so happy I saw some. If you guys could come on up. One's great. Come on up. Then I talk to myself, so thank you for coming. What's your name? Grace? Perfect. Good morning. All right, so I brought with me some crayons. Do you use crayons at school? Do you like crayons? You probably like markers or colored pencils better. Which one? Oh, you do like crayons. So crayons are great. I love crayons. I actually use crayons every day. And all of us probably did at some point. And um, I remember getting excited to get a brand new box of crayons. I still do because I teach kindergarten. So um, do you get crayons with the, the big box with the sharpener on the back? Yeah, that's the best. 
Yeah, yeah, I remember getting those. Those make me so happy. So anyway, crayons are a lot of fun, but there's a problem with crayons because what happens if you're a little rough with them? They break, exactly. So um, they break very easily. And the bigger that we get, the easier it is, good morning, the easier it is to break crayons. What's your name? Charlotte. Charlotte. Thanks for coming up. So you use crayons too at school still? What grade are you in? Second, yeah. So crayons are very useful, but they do break. And the older we get, the easier it is to break them. We have to be extra gentle with them. Do you find that you probably break them a little more when they color really dark? But then I, I, and it was so big, and I only broke one crayon. It was the black one. Oh, the one that you use a lot. That's what I find. But I was just wanted to say that crayons are a lot like people. Like, um, if you're not careful, you might not have any crayons left, and then you have a bunch of pieces, and you can still use them, but they're not as easy to use. And people are a lot like crayons, so we can be broken very easily. Not colored with, but we can be broken just the way crayons can. So if people mistreat us, some of you might know kids who are in the habit of being mean to other people, and they think that they can get what they want from people who are smaller or weaker or just different from them. So they push others around, they call them names, and they'll hurt people. Like, do you know any people like that that aren't super nice? See, there's people like that, but unfortunately, they aren't just a problem that you find in school. There's people that are not kind everywhere, and everywhere they go, they leave broken people behind. And the sad thing is that this type of people could have several friends if they wanted to, but instead of trying to be nice, they push and they shove and they try to get what they want by being unkind. So. Pretty soon, what do they have left? Do they have a bunch of friends or do they just have a bunch of people that are broken? They've hurt their feelings. Yeah, but I want you to remember how fragile crayons are because I want you to remember to treat other people with kindness, right? And what's more, I want you to be aware of the people around you, not just the bullies, but the people who the bullies are mistreating. And nothing can heal a broken person like love. And a little love can make a lot of difference in someone else's life. And um, don't forget, God wants us to love those who are difficult to love too. And they may not look like it, but most of them are broken people too. So show a little love to a bully and you might make a real difference in their life and in other lives too. Okay, let us pray. Gracious God, Jesus taught us how to care for one another. Help us to follow his example and show our love by acts of kindness towards others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's Psalter reading comes from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As for the holy ones in the land, they are noble, in whom is all my delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out or take their names upon my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion of cup, my cup. You hold my lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. I keep the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body also rests secure, for you do not give me up to Sheol or let your faithful one see the pit. 
you show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Today's epistle reading will be read from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1, 13, 
25. through 25. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now, the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, carousing, and things like oh, sorcery, enmities, strife, flesh, anger, jealousy, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Once again, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We ask humbly yet boldly in the name of Christ, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. What do you think of when you think of the word freedom? If you're in a July 4th state of mind, perhaps you'll recall Patrick Henry's famous line, give me liberty or give me death. Or these words from the Declaration of Independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Or perhaps what comes to mind when you hear the word freedom this weekend in particular is Friday's Supreme Court ruling reversing Roe v. Wade, a decision which will severely restrict the freedom of many American women to make choices regarding their bodies and their lives. Or if you're from my generation, when you hear the word freedom, maybe you think of the lyrics written by Chris Christopherson and sung most memorably by Janis Joplin, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. Which sounds a little cynical, but which may be some people's experience, I suppose. Yet I believe there is more to freedom than nothing left to lose. One definition of freedom, according to Webster, is the liberation from slavery or liberation from restraint, or liberation from the power of another, which is what St. Paul had in mind when he wrote to the Galatians. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Paul had founded the church in Galatia, but after Paul left the Galatian community, other teachers came behind him and insisted that in order to become a Christian, these Gentiles first had to adhere to the Jewish law, which for males included undergoing circumcision, to which Paul in his letter says, nonsense, for freedom Christ has set us free. 
Those who came after Paul insisted that each Christian needed to keep the entire Jewish law, which included lots and lots of rules and regulations and subsets of rules and regulations, to which Paul says, nonsense. For freedom, Christ has set us free. For the whole law, writes Paul, is summed up in a single commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. The true meaning of love, according to Alan Bream, is found in the freedom to give yourself away. True freedom is what you get when you live your life in loving service to others. St. Augustine put it this way, love and do what you will. If you believe, or I believe, I should say, that what Augustine meant was, if you truly love God and truly love others, then you are free to do whatever you want, because what you will want will be, as far as it's humanly possible, an expression of love, love toward God and love toward the other. And as St. Paul would say, there's no law against that. Of course, in his letter, Paul goes on to say there are limits to this freedom. It's not an anything goes kind of freedom. It's not a license to do whatever feels good or to do just anything we want. There are constraints. In general, the constraints are the responsibility and commitment Christ followers have to the welfare of others in the faith community. Freedom is to be in service to others. And what that means is that there are some things that as baptized followers of Christ, one simply will not do. In fact, as followers of Christ, we have been set free from the power of sin over our lives. Indeed, there is a whole category of attitudes and actions which Paul refers to as the works of the flesh, which have no place in the Christian life. Sexual immorality, orgies, witchcraft, getting drunk and carousing, envy and jealousy, causing dissension and creating factions in other communities, disrupting attitudes and actions. All of these must be avoided. In the words of Scott Hosey, Christ did not set us free to be a jerk. I like that line. I wish I had thought of that. Christ did not set us free to be a jerk. Rather, Christ has given us the Spirit to remind us of all that Christ has taught us. Thus, we are called to follow as the Spirit guides us. We are called to move as the Spirit nudges us, allowing the Spirit to bring forth in us the so-called fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. With these words, St. Paul paints a portrait of a beautiful life. These are not laws for behavior. Rather, they are characteristics of those who in their freedom are open and responsive to the creative spirit of God. There is no law but freedom, but that freedom is framed by a context that is by a covenant of mutuality and love. I've officiated at a lot of funerals and memorial services over the course of my career as a pastor, and I think most people would be pleased if it could be said about them, his life or her life was characterized by love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These indeed are the qualities of a beautiful life, the characteristics of a life well lived. Once when my daughter was in college, I asked her what she saw in the man she was dating. Probably not the first time a father asked that question of his daughter. But I'll never forget her answer. She said, Dad, he's the kindest person I've ever known. In today's world in which too many people engage in hate speech and bullying, 
and cutthroat tactics in business and politics, I think it's refreshing when a person is respected for his or her kindness. Singer, songwriter, Carrie Newcomer, in a commencement address given at Goshen College in 2016, had this to say about kindness. We talk a lot about love, she said. We talk about love in songs, in movies, in spiritual community. Love is big, it's so big and so wide. Sometimes you just can't get your arms around love. But kindness is love in human size. It's the country co cousin to love. Kindness brings soup when you're sick. It hangs out in the kitchen, washing dishes when no one asked it to. It opens the door when your hands are full and stops everything to listen to your story. It's not flashy, it's not fancy, or likely to make it to the front page. It's a small practice, so humble. It's easy to forget how profoundly powerful it is. Kindness lightens and softens our days. It reframes the world and expresses love on a human scale. I like that. Kindness is love in human size. Kindness reframes the world and expresses love on a human scale. And God knows the world could use a little more kindness or a lot more kindness. My prayer for this faith community is the Spirit will produce in us a bountiful crop of kindness. A Roman Catholic nun by the name of Sister Virginia once offered a children's message. She gathered the children around her on the step in front of the communion table and she held up a plant. It was a sorry looking plant and I have one in my office I should have brought as a prop this morning. One I've neglected, I, I should say. But this plant in the children's sermon was wilted and clearly damaged. Sister Virginia said to the children, this plant was given to me by a dear friend who loves me very much. She wanted me to have a living thing in remembrance of her. Then Sister Virginia said, you know what I did? I left it in the car overnight on a cold winter evening and look what happened to it. It froze and now it has died. Virginia looked at the children and said, a world without love and kindness is like a plant that is frozen and dead. As St. Paul concludes our epistle text for today, he writes, the fruits of the Spirit. I want to make sure you remember these. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are not laws for behavior. Rather, they are characteristics of those who in their freedom are open and responsive to the creative spirit of God. For freedom, Christ has set us free, writes Paul. And the whole law, he continues, is summed up in a single sentence. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no law but freedom, but that freedom is framed by a context that is by a covenant of mutuality and love. Or as I would prefer to call it, our beautiful life together. Amen and amen. As we prepare to receive the morning offering, I would first like to say that we're now going back to offering plates at the entrances, so we're not really receiving it. But I would like to say also thank you to all of you who have continued to support the church, its ministry and mission, even during a pandemic. If you're making your offering online, you may now do so using Venmo. And I would like to uh, remind us all that about 10 days ago, an email went out inviting members and friends who wish to do so to make a special offering 
to assist the family from Ukraine we've been walking alongside for about a month, the family of Ivan, Katerina, and Jan Mashliakevich, who had their home in Mariupol bombed. They escaped to Poland and about a month ago finally arrived in the United States and settled in Garfield. As I said, we've been walking alongside them. Their needs for furnishings have been met nicely by you and others. Thank you. Their ongoing needs, as they're awaiting the arrival of Social Security cards, their ongoing needs are for some extra help for rent and food. So if you are so moved, uh, you may make that as part of your offering today as well. Or you may mail a check to the church. I think the email said the deadline was today, but we'll extend it for a couple days if you'd like to mail in a contribution. Again, your contributions to them are so greatly appreciated to this family as they settle here in the United States. And now, as we come to our next musical offering, Christopher, thank you for your flexibility and your versatility today. The prayers of the people once again this morning includes moments of silence during which you are invited to offer your own prayers. It is also a responsive prayer, so I invite you to consult your bulletin. If you're with us online, you will find the prayer on your screen. Let us pray. Holy God, one in three and three in one, hear us as we pray for your blessing, saying, Holy Triune God, have mercy on us. We pray for the Church of Jesus Christ. Gracious God, help us to follow you, guided by your Spirit. Revive our faith as we seek you in this place. Show us how to proclaim your kingdom. Holy Triune God, have mercy on us. We pray for the world. Bring peace and restoration to all in need, especially the people of Ukraine. We pray also for the victims of gun violence, including those who have been wounded and those who have lost loved ones and friends. Deliver us from hatred and violence.
Holy Triune God, have mercy on us. We pray for our communities. Open the doors of this congregation. Let strangers find welcome here and make us ready to meet the image of God in them. Holy Triune God, have mercy on us. We pray for loved ones. You know the struggles and concerns of all. Take away their fear, pain, and doubt, for you are a God who works wonders. Holy Triune God, have mercy on us. All this we ask of you, Lord God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
As we prepare to conclude this service this morning, may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, that you might live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love from this day forth and forevermore. Amen.